Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Well, since yesterday, there have been three articles in crypto media, um, slightly different titles, of course, that's not surprising, but the same content. It's about Jed McCaleb. Look at the title of this. Ripple sends 100 million XRP to former CTO Jed McCaleb, who reportedly sells 500,000 XRP per day. Um, so I, I'm going to run through parts of all three of them. This one, I would say, is the least bad of the three. So I'll share with you my thoughts on this. But seriously, none of this is a big deal. I do want to explain why, though. So I'll hop into the specifics of what the deal is, what is the arrangement that uh, Jim McHale and Ripple have as it pertains to him selling his massive holdings of XRP. And then I'll wrap up the video with a piece from Coindesk titled SEC Chair Clayton. Would be Bitcoin ETFs have work left to be done? <clears throat> now, before we get going here, if you would please delicately tap that like button, but don't smash it. You don't need to get all smashy smashy on it. Just delicately tap it like an adult. And if you would please consider sub subscribing to the channel. You, you don't have to. I understand I have the stupidest name in the entire XRP community. Maybe that's too big of a turnoff for you. Like, screw that guy. I'm not going to subscribe to him. Or maybe just consider it though, sleep on it. I know, big life decision. But to all who do subscribe, thank you very much for the support. This is my most favoritist hobby ever. And without people supporting me, I wouldn't be able to do it. So a genuine, very sincere thank you to all. All right, let's hop into the content here. Ripple just transferred 100 million XRP to a wallet belonging to co-founder Jed McCaleb. Well Alert tracked <coughs> Saturday's transaction which was worth $26.3 million at the time of transfer. You can see here's the whale alert on the actual screen. From Ripple to Jed McCaleb wallet. All right. McCaleb served as Ripple's chief technical officer before leaving in 2013 and launching Stellar the following year. However, he still holds a large personal trove of XRP, a portfolio that was reportedly worth $20 billion during XRP's peak in early 2018. The former CTO has been vocal about his intention to sell off all of his holdings, his XP holdings, though he entered into an agreement with Ripple in 2014 to stagger his sales to prevent tanking the cryptocurrency's value. And so, you know, say what you will about Jed McCaleb, there were clearly uh, disagreements from a business perspective about how to go to market and all sorts of things. But even so, I still have to be appreciative of the guy because without him, XRP wouldn't even exist. The whole idea with behind consensus mechanism, which is really at the heart of the XRP ledger, uh, that that whole thing is the brainchild of Jed McCaleb. He's the one that came uh, up with the concept. He's an early Bitcoiner and thought he found, you know, found a way to, to do it better. And there, there are things they wanted different. That's why ultimately when uh, Stellar was launched, it, it was a copy of, of XRP. And then they just tweaked some stuff. I don't know all the technical differences, but for instance, I do know Stellar um, is inflationary. New, new uh, Stellar lumens can be created and are created, <clears throat> which is the opposite of XRP, which is deflationary because, uh, well, first of all, XRP cannot, not new XRP cannot be created ever. And, uh, you know, with... <laughs> with uh, little bits of XRP being shredded with every single transaction, it's deflationary, which is awesome for the purposes specifically that uh, Ripple's seeking to use it for. But um, so anyway, nonetheless, like uh, some people like to give the guy a hard time, but I'm just like, eh, I'm appreciative, whatever. So there are business disagreements. We're never going to know all the details. We're not privy to that. But he went his own way and started Stellar, and he really has a completely different business model. Not really directly competing with Ripple. They're going to market completely different purposes, completely different ways. So I, I don't mind. I, I, you know, and I want more than one winner in this space. So I'm cool with it. Anyway, uh, the following year, however, Ripple alleged that McCaleb had violated the, the agreement. In early 2016, Monica Long, Ripple's senior vice president of marketing, announced a follow-up agreement designed to give the company the ability to prevent a massive sell-off. Said Long, quote, Jed will donate 2 billion XRP to a charitable donor-advised fund, DAF, of his choice. The same limits are placed on the ability of the charity to sell the XRP as are placed on the Jed's ability to, uh, to uh, sell his remaining XRP. All of Jed and his children's remaining XRP, approximately 5.3 billion XRP, will be placed in a custody account at Ripple. <clears throat> While Jed retains full title and ownership of his remaining XRP, Ripple will control the release of his, uh, his XRP in a manner consistent with the settlement agreement. 
Specifically, Jed will be allowed to sell his remaining XRP in the following manner. For the first of the agreement, Jed and the DAF will be able to collectively sell 0.5% of the average daily volume of XRP for each day of the week, including weekends and holidays. For the second and third years of this agreement, Jed and the DAF will be able to collectively sell for each day of the week 0.75% of the average daily volume. For the fourth year of the agreement, Jed and the DAF will be able to collectively sell for each day of the week 1% of the average daily volume. For any time after the fourth year of the agreement, for each day of the week, Jed and the DAF will be able to sell 1.5% of the average daily uh, volume. And so, guys, this is not a huge percent. Look, if, if XRP is something that deserves to um, be adopted long term, if XRP is something that deserves to have a price because there's actual uh, value thanks to the utility it offers, this is not going to matter. This will not pre the, the selling of this XRP, it's a small percent, and it's not going to do anything to, in a meaningful way, prevent adoption and, and uh, uh, prevent, uh, it's not going to prevent price, price appreciation. Now, of course, I understand anytime you're talking about selling, yes, there's downward price pressure, but I'm just saying, if this is as big as you and I think it's going to be, the downward pressure from Jed sales it's not going to stop this. It will not stop this train. There is no freaking way. And so I don't mind. I, look, and, and plus, look, if, if he did something he wasn't supposed to do and selling outside of the scope of what the agreement was, okay, that's stupid and bad and okay, fine. I'll stand with you in shunning that behavior. But on the flip side, like I said, we get to own XRP and it exists because of this guy. So, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not that terribly upset anyway. But, um, Coinmetrics has reported that McCaleb is now selling off 500,000 XRP worth roughly $129,000 per day. And the new transfer triggered a fresh round of debate on Ripple's involvement with the digital asset. And here's a quote. And I remember reading this from Tiffany Hayden. This is on September 7th. And, she, and um, she wrote, I know, right? Private businesses shouldn't be allowed to exist. The name Jed should be banned. And most importantly, no entity on earth should ever be allowed to accumulate more crypto or more anything than at Crypto BitLord, no matter his level of squalor. <laughs> so I kind of chuckled at that one. Um, Ripple itself owns more than half of the total supply of XRP and says it sells portions of its holdings to operate the company and fund blockchain and crypto-based projects. It sold 251.51 million in XRP during the second quarter of this year and 169.42 million in the first quarter. All right, so, so there you go. Now let me show you... Um, this is not going to surprise you. This is Bitcoinist.com. They have this this article titled "26 Million Dollar XRP Transferred from Ripple to XCTO Jed McHale." I'm not going to really read this, but uh, it's critical. There was a part I wanted to cover. I can find it quickly. I don't want to make you wait while I'm kind of scrolling through here. But uh, yeah, here you go. This is not a surprise. So they wrote this. The community is seeing this as a betrayal, th threatening to fork the Ripple project if their concerns are not addressed. A petition started, blah, blah, blah. I've covered the petition enough. I don't need to talk about that again. But you can see the narrative that they're driving. And they're not talking about the specifics of the agreement uh, between Ripple and Jed McCaleb to uh, sell in a like, kind of like a paste approach. So kind of worthless there. There's more. So anyway, the reason I want to highlight this is just more about them driving a narrative. Then there's a piece from Tron Weekly, and what they title this one? This one wasn't as bad. Uh, Ripple XRP worth $26 million allegedly sent to Stellar CEO Jed uh, McCaleb. And then they start talking. See, look at the narrative, though, again. And it's not like everything they wrote in here is bad. Uh, but then they go into, like, look, they, look, at, look at what they're writing. Ripple continuously accused of crashing XRP's price. And so they go into like a whole different thing that's outside the scope of what you would believe them to talk about based on the title there, which to me is just silly. Uh, Ripple's being perfectly <clears throat> taking a perfectly well reasoned approach in terms of uh, the quantity of XP that they're selling, and they're trying to keep it at a, a certain smaller percentage of the market, which is why they're always shifting as they get new data about the actual volume of the cryptocurrency asset class and specifically how much XRP is moving around the planet. So I'm cool with it. I think it makes perfect sense. All right, next here, got a tweet from uh, the Hoddle style, and I covered. Um, he, he's got a, a, like a, a crypto store. It's the uh, I like to highlight community membership. I, I haven't ever purchased anything. Just full disclosure, I haven't purchased anything from the site, so I can't speak personally. But his website is thehoddlestyle.com, and I like to, like I said, you know, highlight uh, people that are doing stuff for the XP community, and I like this. 
He's got, he's not the only one to do XRP socks, but I gotta admit, I like these. These look pretty sharp here. Look at that. If you're not driving, feel free to take a look. But if you are driving, keep your hands on the wheel at 10 and 2, motorist. But I uh, got Bitcoin socks, XRP stocks, strong hand socks. So if you're in the market uh, for some apparel, I mean, feel free to take a look at his website. All right, uh, next, you got a tweet from XRP Crypto Wolf. Thank you very much for sending this my way, good sir. SEC Chairman Clayton said progress is being made in the crypto space to allow Bitcoin ETF to a launch. Clayton acknowledged that BTC businesses are coming close to satisfying concerns, but people need to answer hard questions for them to be comfortable. So here you go. And then here's the piece <coughs> on coin, uh, Coindesk. It says the the market has taken steps to address the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's concerns about uh, approving a Bitcoin exchange traded fund ETF, but there is still work left to be done, said the agency head. Speaking on CNBC Monday, SEC Chairman Jay Clayton said progress is being made in the crypto space to allow a Bitcoin ETF to launch, though concerns linger. In November, the chairman said concerns around price manipulation were a key holdup for the financial product's green light, alongside questions such as how custody operates. On Monday, Clayton reiterated these concerns, saying, quote, An even harder question, given that they trade on largely unregulated exchanges, <clears throat> is how can we be sure that the, those prices aren't subject to significant manipulation? People needed to answer these hard questions for us to be comfortable that this was the appropriate kind of product. And then states, uh, the SEC's questions are not trivial, Clayton added. And so, yeah, still, still more to, to kind of be figured out here. Uh, Clayton's remarks come just weeks after the SEC is expected to approve or reject a pair of Bitcoin ETF proposals. Bitwise Asset Management, which filed one of the proposals with NYSE ARCA, has published a number of reports over the past year in an effort to convince the SEC that the market is mature enough to support such a product. VanX slash SolidX submitted the other proposal with CBOE BZX. This proposal was filed in 2018 and was seen as a strong contender to become the first Bitcoin ETF approved by the SEC. However, it was withdrawn during the prolonged government shutdown of early 2019 and refiled. Now, I remember covering that when that happened. There was all sorts of speculation early on about what, uh, what the cause was, and it apparently it was actually tied to the government shutdown. Anyway, uh, the SEC has postponed decisions on both ETF proposals, but faces a final deadline of October 13th for Bitwise and October 18th for VanX slash SolidX. While awaiting... Uh, uh, waiting for an ETF approval, VanEck has begun uh, offering shares of its VanEck SolidX Bitcoin Trust to qualified institutional buyers using an exemption under the SEC's rules. Though the product announced last week is not a retail offering and therefore not an ETF, the shares come from the same trust on which VanEck hopes to build an ETF. And from my perspective, it's just a matter of time until we do have an ETF that's actually approved. Infrastructure being built out, early days, I'm going to keep saying it. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.